Hello, this is a little series on relays, contactors, and basic control equipment that you like to find if you're doing electrical controls, ECNI, or maybe just fixing motors and stuff. They form into two main categories I'm gonna discuss here. One is a relay, which can look like this, or it could look like this, or it could look like fucking anything, yeah? The other one is contactors, which can look like this, but again, they can look like anything. But electrically inside, the connections do the same thing. So I'm gonna take you in this little series over a number of the most likely relays and contactors and control piece of equipment that are the backbone of any control system and tell you what they roughly do and how they roughly work. These are relays. These are the backbone of all industrial controls. And what you've got to think the relay does is, if you want to turn on something big, but you want to do it with something small, which is a common thing that you're always doing controls, relays will do it for you. They have an electrical mechanical core, which I'm gonna put a picture of here, hopefully. And when you energize the coil, it moves mechanical switches that move contacts inside. There will always be a common and a normally open and a normally closed, or to be fair, they could do anything, but most normal bog standard 95% of relays have common, like this, normally open, normally closed, and they switch, they sit at one and they switch to the other. It could be normally open when it's not energized, it could be normally closed when it's not energized, no one really knows, but it's for switching bigger amperages or different voltages with another voltage. You energize the coil, it moves a mechanical switch, and that is all it does. And from the diagram, you should be able to see how that functions. This one is sort of a relay, but they're called contactors. It has three big terms on the top, normally L1, L2, L3, and it is a big fuck off switch. And it can be controlled by a little teeny weeny voltage. Common voltage is 24 volt DC, 110 volts, 240 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, 12 volts. You buy the flavor that you want to switch. And then you put the contacts in here that are big, that run the motor or something, and it will switch it. It is that simple. Think about it. You say you've got three million lights and you can't turn them on with one light switch. You make your one light switch switch the coil on and that clunks in. Then you put as many contacts as you need to switch on all your lights for as many circuits as you need. And when you energize the coils on all of the contactors, it pulls in. Dude, it's that easy. It's not rocket science. Look at the picture and see if you can see from the picture what it does. Then you've got these relays. These are timer relays. These are the most complex ones and I'll put a few various different diagrams up during this video, yeah? These take in a voltage from a signal like the on signal or the off signal or the whatever the fuck it is signal and they give an output. However, they are capable of delaying it or starting it after or basically fucking anything because they're timers. These ones are quite simple but these are the ones that I have the most trouble with because timers can do all sorts of stuff. They can flash. They can on and off. They can, when they see the energization, turn the coil on from anything from 0.1 of a second to three years after. These are the most complicated ones. And these are the ones where you need to start looking at the drawings and working out what they do. They normally have a drawing on the side of them, like that, or like that, or like that, even, that tell you what they're doing. Time is the ones you'll have the most trouble with. These are the ones that cause the most faults. And when they go, they just go, but they can do anything. Timers can do anything that you can envisage doing with time, turning something on and off. This is a very certain type of relay. This is called a voltage monitoring relay. On the top, it's got room for L1, L2, and L3. On the front, you've got the maximum permissive over percentage of voltage, the time before it trips, and the maximum permissible under voltage. You've got a little light to say the contact is closed, the relay's working, and you've got a little light to say that it's powered up. On the bottom, you've got a relay, normally open, normally closed, and a common. And all this little relay does is, you put L1, L2, and L3 in it, and it looks at them and makes sure they were in the voltage range defined by the dials on the front. If it's not, it clicks the relay contact across and it can signal to you or switch off what it's doing. It's that simple. This one's made by Broyd's Controls. I strongly recommend you have a nose on their website because they do all sorts of funky relays doing funky things. This one does not look at rotation, but some of these 
just look at rotation, whether it's the right way for your application or the wrong way. Other ones will monitor single phase and neutral and that kind of thing. Because if you've got a pump that must run, but could be damaged if it runs on two phases, you could have one of these sat there when the pump's not running, monitoring the phases. And then if for any reason the phases disappear, you can sound an alarm. And you find that out in advance, not when you want the pump to start. That's a Pilch relay, otherwise known as the emergency stop relay, yeah, they're an absolute cunt. So here's the general gist with relays, yeah? You put something in and you get something out. They're an interface between voltages and currents and all that type of thing. The most important thing to remember is, if you want to select one, you need to know that they're there. Now in the dark days, you'd have to fumble around in the RS catalogue or manufacturer's data sheets to find the relay you wanted. Now, you can pretty much Google what you want. So, I haven't covered current sensing relays. Is there a relay that will switch a contact if, say, for example, a cable goes over more than two amps? Yes, there is. There's current sensing relays. They exist. Just Google it, and it'll probably land you on the RS page. Are there relays for phase rotation? Now, we covered phase loss relays just a minute ago. But say, for example, you've got a pump, and it's imperative that it spins in the anti-clockwise direction you can fit a relay that checks that and enables a contact if the phases are going the wrong way so the pumps would work backwards it will inhibit it starting and if it's going the right way it will allow it to start it's a safety device and that's what relays mostly can be as well and interfacing do you want to turn something on with 12 volts but it's actually 240 volts you're going to need a relay the most important thing about relays to understand is the drawings and how they work you cannot look at relay and tell how it functions. There'll be a drawing or information on it, or the manufacturer will provide a drawing or information on a data sheet. You need to grab that, look at the drawing, and understand it. And what I would suggest you do is, because this is a very slapdash video, is you've got to go out there and look. Look at your drawings and look at what your relays and contacts are doing. Look at things like auxiliaries. When the contactor switches, you can fit a thing to it called an auxiliary, which tells you that it's actually pulled in and confirms that it's there. It's no good sending 12 volts to a contactor that you think started a pump only to find out the contactor had pulled in. If you fit an auxiliary, that's a mechanical interlock between the switch, which will report back that the contactor is successfully pulled in. If you then also got a phase analyzing relay that sees the phases there, you know your contactor's pulled in and you've got your phases there. You can even get relays that will detect the motion of motors. So the relay really is the backbone of the controls industry. And without understanding what relays are available, how they function and how their drawings fit into your design, they'll be useless to you. But without them, you're totally fucked. So get used to looking in the RS book, which is now RS Online. Go on there, find some relays. Just put relays in the search, find some odd relays, Work out what they do, look at the drawings and understand how they work. Then when you see them in real life in a drawing or in a panel, you'll know exactly what they do and how to fault find on them. Like I say, leave timers till the end because they're an absolute bastard. And when you're feeling really, really brave, try and work out a pilch relay, a safety relay, which is unique functions that I have to cover in a totally separate video. But like and comment if you... Fuck that like shit. Don't do that shit. Just comment below if you want to see something more in depth. This is very much... Glazing over all that's available just to give you some understanding because people ask me this shit all the fucking time. See you later. Just because you've got a face like my fucking beanbag, mate. <laughs>